Rose. Hi, you gentlemen. Hi. What's up, Kant? What are you doing? Nice hat, Ray. Nice, nice, Rich. I'm out of breath. I'm sorry. Did you do a run down here, you fat ass? I, just, I literally just got home. I pissed, ran downstairs. Sad that running down the stairs now makes me winded more than running up the stairs. Where'd you get home from? The donut store? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> fat ass. Oh, fucking fat joke. I love it. <laughs> no, I was at a birthday party. Oh, cool. What'd you do? Eat cake? <laughs> Cupcakes. Had a couple. Yep. <laughs> Lena, you're not going to eat all that cupcake, right? Nope. All right, good. Give it to dad. Let me see what it tastes like. Mm, good. <laughs> yeah, I got to try this. Make sure it has no... Uh, <laughs> Why is your daughter stuff? crying? I stole her cupcake. Back off. <laughs> Back off. I'm fucking starving. It's not your kid. Idiot. Uh, Bill, talk a little bit. I think you might be semi-modulated. How about now? Worse. Modulated. <laughs> Put the cordy cord in. Check your, uh, check, your, check your gain, and you might be coming through the computer. <clears throat> well, all right. technical you know, talk. I don't even know what that means. This is the first time back after your guys trip over to Granite Roots. Yep. Throw them another little, another little, another little splash. Better. Yeah, now turn it up. Yeah, it's, you're muted, so it's perfect. <laughs> Better. Tell me more. How about now? A little more. How about now? That's Ooh. good. So right. it, I found. So it sounds that- like you have a dick in your mouth, but it's fine. Well, that's just permanent. I found that um, Bill has to be a little bit higher than normal because he, when he goes into his fucking like perfect mumble mumble talk, mm-hmm. we have to be able to understand what he says. <laughs> Although you look bright eyed and bushy tailed this Sunday, Bill. Yeah, this is weird. Is sober Bill? Is this sober Bill? Well, I'm drinking right now, but I haven't drank much. <laughs> Apologies. That, that was stupid of me. I, I mean, it's 5.30. We're going to record till about 8.30. Let's check back in in a couple hours. Yeah. Let's check if in after the interview. Now, so you just Bill. said that. You just said that we're recording till 8.30, and the lights in Bill's eyes just went, what? Oh, fuck. fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have an interview? Let's just, make, uh, let's, just, let's just assume that Bill forgot that because he had a busy weekend. That's why he didn't send the uh, questions over for the second straight He already had the week. questions. Remember? He told us the questions already. I don't remember that. (laughs) Oh, I remember him. Oh, I do remember him. All right. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, shit. All right. Yeah, this should be a long night. Uh, Welcome to the Simple Mind Sports Show. Monday headlines, March 15th, Daylight Savings. I'm sure that fucked everybody up. Mm -hmm. Uh, Welcome to the show. Ray, you're a stern. I think everyone at this point in the world is a stern believer of daylight savings as useless and dumb. And it's no the point stupidest in. thing ever. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck I did the read farmers. Something. Fuck the farmers. I, I don't understand what the whole point is. Oh, so farmers can go out and have some fucking sunlight. Fuck you. I'm going in the dark and during the daytime when I'm going to work. I don't care about the farmers. Just make me my fucking potatoes. That's all I care about. You fucking piece of shit. Jeez, that cupcake. Oh, they make the potatoes up. if they're in a French fried mold, though. Well, Not yeah. a natural potato. They have to be either mashed or in a French fried cutout. Maybe no, some potato no, no. chips. I enjoy a nice baked potato. Sour cream, Bill. extra sour cream, bacon, uh, chives, extra butter. That's Got why it. I like my baked potato. Or deep fried. Oh, fuck yeah. Everything's Anything deep, deep fried. Everything's. Have you ever had a deep fried Oreo? Uh, no. Mm-hmm. I was coming up with a mother joke, but I didn't. I'm. How, I'm a little I'd, slow today. I'd love to hear the mother joke from a deep fried Oreo, though. <laughs> that's what. That's what I. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm dealing. It's. Uh, I'm actually quite tired, and it's. Uh, I'm having a raw butthole kind of day on Ooh. on this Sunday, and that's never Cac- good. Cactus so. ass. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty bad. So. Uh, yeah. What about um, season? Maybe I try to warn you guys. No one listens to me. I'm slightly. What is distracted. wrong with you today, Ray? You're yeah, very you're, like you're I'm fired drunk. up. I'm drunk. I'm sorry. Oh, Jesus. You're gonna be strung up a fucking sugar hive. And all I brought beers to the no, I, no. I brought to the beers to the party. No one drank them, so I drank them all. Oh, cool. Turn your mic down so you're not yelling in our ears. No, I'll, I will yell as much as I want to yell today. Ray, turn your mic down just a little bit. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, okay uh speaking of beers uh, oh he is real drunk tonight this per is usual fun. i'm sure those beers 
Uh, white birch is our favorite. Birch. It was white birch at the party. Cupcakes and white birch, they go great. Uh, down in Nashville, New Hampshire. Ray, if you can remember the address. Absolutely. 460 Amherst Street, Nashville, New Hampshire. Atta baby. He's not that gone yet. Um, get on down to the tap room. They do flights. They do pints. They distribute. If you see them in the store, grab yourself a four pack, a six pack. The tri fruit is uh, going off uh, big time down there with the nice weather arriving. So, uh, Go, go dip into that and tell them the Simple Minds boys sent you. Buy yourself a hat um, and just Don't yourself. Your remember, yeah, do no, never, no. never get your friends one. White Birch Brewing. Get the Imperial um, Stout too. That's what I was drinking today. Oh, okay. I told you that was good, didn't I? Yeah, that's very good. I fucking told you. Jesus no, Christ, well. that's like 12 and a half percent. <laughs> well, was well, it? This idiot's fucking stupid right now. Oh, well, that makes all the sense of the world. Oh, he, did a, he did a fucking seal slide down the stairs to get into the podcast. <laughs> hey, how about... Wee! For... <laughs> no, it's what one of those sound like... old rhino, mate? <laughs> I just imagine Ray's house has that people with like broken hips, that elevator that takes you up and down the stairs. He doesn't want to burn those extra calories walking up and down the stairs with that. Yeah, it takes like four stairs. hours to get to the top. My grandmother had one. We used to do it as kids, <laughs> but we do it once. Like it was boring as shit. It's too slow. Ray loves it though. He gets to eat all his deep fried Oreos on the way up. That's what we need a sponsor. Down. We need a sponsor for that so I can put that in my house. It actually gives them five <laughs> minutes of more eating time on the way up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. Who's the who's Bowl the cereal? Biggest, who's, <laughs> Who's the biggest name in the, uh, Fatty Lifts? Fatty Lifts Incorporated. We'll, we'll Google it afterwards. There we go. We should start our own company. You'd be a perfect <laughs> spokesman. <laughs> Have you ever Look felt up. like you don't want to walk up the stairs? Are you walking up the stairs with two sandwiches in your hand and you can't hold the railing? <laughs> Sit down in the fatty chair. Fatty Lift will get you. Fatty Lift you 101 to glides you right up the stairs, <laughs> hands free. Do hands not put free, down baby. the sandwich. <laughs> oh shit. Well, you know what? It, it is it is daylight Woo. savings, Ray. You sent us a, a nasty text message. You started your day off in a bad mood, and uh, you know, I'm in a great mood now, baby. Clearly, you got over clearly. it. Let, allow Did me I get to any bring... gummies today too. <laughs> that might be for the interview. Oh, allow Jesus. me to get I'll you ask back all down, your questions. Uh, bring you, you back down to earth, there, Raymond. Uh, Bill, we want to get your Ray and I had our uh, we had to you know do the emergency uh, talk about the Cam Newton signing on Friday. Look, the floor is yours. Give us your give us your immediate reaction, and then obviously we have we've had a couple days of fallout here. We've learned more about the contract, and you know there's been some reports we can get into. But uh, I would imagine quite the dichotomy between dichotomy between last year's uh, on air live <laughs> video when yeah. we saw you pop a boner on the screen. That was more this- just to piss you off because I knew you hated Cam Newton's guts. But I, I'll tell you what, though, I'm not happy. You know, I mean, I guess looking at the contract makes it a little you know a little better because i think it's backup money so i think it, it does open up you know a, another quarterback but if he's your number one option at quarterback this year just just fuck off right now you know i think you said in the text earlier what what saturday you know what quarter what wide receiver or running back is going to want to play with him he's going to answer bill's going to call somebody and they're going to hang up the phone that's what's going to happen and like cam newton i think everything outside of his throwing shoulder is there but I think the biggest thing as a quarterback that you need to rely on is that one thing that you throw the ball with, and that's your fucking throwing shoulder, and he cannot throw the ball anymore. I just think they wanted to address this now, and I just think he probably was honestly one of the best options on the free agent market. They already had him. I think in Bill's mind they could surround him with an offense, and he can do better than 7-9 and nine last year. I mean, if you think about it, I'm trying to really talk myself up into Cam Newton. I'm really trying to I can talk tell, man, because you started with if he's your starter, fuck off. And now we're in. He might have been, well, been the best. I'm trying. I'm trying so fucking hard. I hate this. I knew it was coming. We've mentioned it multiple times on the show. Prepare for it. I just but think this is where this is where. Hold on. Sorry to interrupt you. He wasn't sorry. the best option. He was the 32nd ranked quarterback in in, in, in quarterback. I just think he was year. the best option just because he's coming from the team. We we all said it. Like I thought, we all said that report coming out week 17 was a little shaky with the you know they were agreed to part ways because i thought the writing was on the wall that he was coming back you know why is he the best option here let me give you some other ones alex smith tyrod taylor andy dalton aj mccarron fucking colt mccoy i would take mark matt barkley i would take and like you said he can't throw he can't throw and never mind he's never been an accurate he's never been a good throwing quarterback he's never been a quarterback that can read a defense he couldn't identify a blitz never identify he couldn't see a blitz 
in his direct line of vision on his right side, how many sacks do we see him take after four seconds of holding the ball? He's just not good. Why can't, like, can't we just get through? So the idea of signing him so they can have a quarterback to go into free agency with, as opposed to not having a quarterback. If you want to talk yourself into that, that that's better go for it. But I won't. Because I, I asked you this question, what's the percentage that Cam Newton is a starter week one? I put it at – oh, Ray, go ahead. 100%. 100%. I put it at 60. I'm, I th- I'm, I'm I probably in between, but way closer to 100. And, and here's why. We heard well, – there's the reports that uh, Belichick went after Garoppolo. There's reports that Belichick Carr. went after uh, David Carr. You guys – one of you guys sent that out to us. And uh, – Derek, Derek, Derek you Carr. Know, Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah. What, what was the offer? A third rounder? Who the fuck is, you know, we know that Belichick is not going to give up probably what the market is dictating for top quarterback. So that leaves you with your, with you bending the pretzel to get yourself there. Jesus, Ray. Ray's just so fucking distracting right now. But that's where that's where it, it feels like that's where Belichick's head's at in terms of who's the best possible scenario. Well, Cam Newton's been here, so let's bring him back. And his teammates like him, and he was easy to coach last year, so let's bring him back. How can his teammates that's like him? They can't, you shit. can't get the ball to him. You can't get the ball to Nikhil Harry. Jacoby Myers was the best offense uh, player you had, which is a third-string wide receiver in any other organization other than New England. I mean, why would you be happy for this guy? You're going to have to reach to get a quality wide receiver this year knowing Cam Newton's going to be your quarterback this year. You got to, because, I mean, if you think, like, you know, Joey Galladay or what a fuck. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny Galladay. Galladay. Kenny I don't know why I keep Joey, Joey Ken- Galloway. From now on, on, but he Kenny. also played on the Patriots. They also signed him and he flamed out. But, again. Because you grew up with Joey Galloway. He, Hold on. He, he from here on out, it's Kenny Galladay, Joey Galloway. It's the only way you can say that. That's the only <laughs> way you can refer to but that. But he guy. already mentioned, he's like, why, did I don't want, why do I want to sign in the same place that I just came from, and meaning Detroit? Like, that that bullshit that just happened in Detroit. They had Matthew Stafford, who was, I think, one of the top 15 quarterbacks in the league. You've seen him first first overall pick out of Georgia, but it's going to be a hard pull. I mean, you're going to look at the second, third, fourth options on the wide receiver market. I mean, you know, the, we've mentioned Curtis Samuel in the past, but even him, why would he, he just came from Teddy Bridgewater. Say what you want about Bridgewater, but at least he throw the fucking football. Mm-hmm. You know, the only I mean? thing That's I'll say about that, we mentioned it before Ray, you and I talked about it on Friday is uh, can some of these players get over the fact that Cam Newton can't throw him the ball. And are they more in line with Cam Newton as as the guy and the icon and what he's been in his career for the NFL and, you know, in the players in that league, he's, he is, you know, looked upon and admired in that league as a player, or he has been in his career. So I do think that has a little bit of a draw with professional athletes. I think guys want to play with guys that they, they like and admire. Now, you know, a guy like Hunter Henry, who looks at his career and goes, yeah, I want to win, but I also he's come out and said I want to play with a quarterback that can get me the ball. And it's easier when you have a good quarterback to play the position. I'm sure he looks at it and goes, "The tight ends had how many catches for the Patriots last year? Five. Fucking one. <laughs> like, Five. how is that a good? How is that a good situation for Especially me? Especially with him coming from Herbert, who just won Rookie of the Year. Why would he leave Justin Herbert? I get it, like he's a free agent. But if you look at the teams that are desperate for tight ends, there's not a lot that are looking for this to make a big splash. So, I mean, if you look at him, if I had my options between Cam Newton and Justin Herbert, where am I going? Justin Back to Herbert LA. all fucking day. Yeah. And to yeah, live so in yeah. LA outside of Boston, that's just a fucking no brainer. I just think that that whole, that whole uh, conversation and pretzel twisting that you have to have a quarterback on your roster. When you go into free agency to say, this is our quarterback. If it's Cam Newton, I think you've, you've really narrowed the gap in that free agency to guys that want to play with Cam Newton. Not guys that want to be top performers. It's just guys that want to play with Cam Newton or guys that you're going to pay top top of the market because money still is going to speak. Money is still going to talk. If you go pay Curtis Samuel top wide receiver dollars, he's coming to New England, no matter who your fucking quarterback is. Throw so $15 just, million dollars at him, he's coming here. Yeah, I just think that that would be the case whether Cam Newton was your quarterback or not. And now signing him, now signing him, you're, you're, you're putting him in a position to come into camp and, and muddy things up. Like we talked about it, Ray, it, you know, Jeff Howe came out the report that just because this signing is what it is, don't, don't sleep on the Patriots still going and being aggressive for another veteran quarterback. 
because like you said, Bill, it's only 5 million guaranteed for Cam Newton and it's backup money. But do you honestly see Cam Newton backing up De- Derek Carr or Jimmy Garoppolo? Nope. I don't see that. I see. No, but I, you know what? That's all right. Let me paint you a yeah. picture because th- that was Jeff Howe's report. And that's what everyone is kind of hoping. The other side of that is they can draft a guy, right? But at, the whole talk has been Patriots going out and getting a veteran quarterback for a stopgap three, four, five year period as they draft and develop and move into the next phase after Tom Brady. Well, that's not happening with Cam Newton as your backup. That's not. Cam Newton is your stopgap in that position. I'm, con- I'm convinced of that. Cam Newton's not backing up Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, in a situation where they go draft a guy, maybe he, he uh, it, midway through the season, becomes your starter, and Cam Newton moves to the bench after he's one touchdown and seven picks or whatever. But well, How many rushing touchdowns does he have? Oh, <laughs> Goddamn Twitter. By the way, I hate Twitter. You rushing tw- and, and passing touchdown people, 20 touchdowns, including the rushes, 10 picks. Tell me if tell me if a one to two ratio is good in the NFL right now for touchdowns and interceptions. No, no. <laughs> no. What was Aaron Rodgers? 41 and five. Give yep. me a fucking break. So Jack Prescott threw for more touchdowns than Cam Newton last year. That's all. I, I guess my point is, Bill, the fact that you signed him, I'm closer to raise 100 percent that he's your starter than your 60 percent because you signed him. And we saw what happened last year when you signed him and they had the quote unquote quarterback competition with Stidham. It wasn't a competition. It wasn't a competition. It's his you job know, to lose. It's his job to lose right now. The only reason I say 60, because I don't, you know, don't throw it past them drafting some, but I'm still not sold on the 49ers actually keeping Garoppolo. You know, I think the draft could be something big. You could kind of, you might see Bill want to maybe part with that first next year. And then again, 5 million, you're going to take a little bit of a dead cap but Bill has done it before. He's cut big guys in training camp, and I know I know what you're going to say, but, I mean, at the same time, if you're bringing him in as backup money, if you don't think that he could potentially be your backup and you go out and get Jimmy Garoppolo, then you're going to eat $5 million bucks and say goodbye, Cam. That's why that's where I'm at, the 60%, because if you draft a guy in the – say you draft a guy in the second round, you know, you've been linked for that guy, I believe, from Texas A&M. He's another good number two. Like, I think he's the top second. Get from Wake Forest is the one they're talking about right now. Yeah, one, there's a couple guys that are the top – second day picks Patriots are kind of linked you see one of those you've seen in the past where you've seen backups get get thrown out behind Brady because the rookie comes in and they they outperform him and Cam Newton's got to be on a short leash so if you go out and you draft a guy or you or you I know I know I know I see your face because he wasn't last year but I mean I just think this year if you go out and you really draft a guy and he's outperforming Cam at some point you got to say okay see you later and Bill, he, you I could outperform was, Cam Newton right now that's right. I probably could, well, but eating $5 million though. I mean, it's backup money in the NFL. Well, right I now. agree. I agree with you, Bill. That's what, that's where actually um, here's, I'm going to change my pitch. Uh, is Cam Newton, the quarterback to start the season. It's either a hundred percent. Yes. Or, or a hundred percent. No. Cause in yours, I agree with you that there still is an opportunity that they go get Jimmy Garoppolo. If San Francisco gets rid of him. if that's the case, they will cut Cam Newton. I yeah. just don't see Jimmy Garoppolo and Cam Newton existing in one quarterback room on the new England Patriots that I like, so like Cam Newton, I don't see any of those veteran free agents that are out there coming in here. It's Cam Newton or a rookie. Andy Dalton. Like is Cam Newton going to back up Andy Dalton? No, don't sleep. I, you know, honestly though, I think not just Jacoby Brissett, you know, I think he's a better version than Cam Newton right now. So, I mean, and he's backed up, you know, he backed up Brady, he backed up Andrew Luck. Or sorry, I didn't back up Andrew Luck, but he was traded there when Luck retired. He backed up Phillip Rivers. I mean, he could be a guy you want to bring in, and you could kind of pull that again because then you can bring him in for. I mean, he made what nineteen million bucks, and that was kind of like a here, here, well, here because Luck retired and they brought in Brian Hoyer. So I mean, I get you, that, Bill, but I don't, I don't think that Belichick is going to let Jacoby Brissett start over Cam Newton, no matter how good he is in camp or not. I don't believe. I don't believe. Out, out of everything we saw last year. With the as long as the leash was with Cam Newton, I have no reason to believe that it won't be like that again this this season unless Bill gets his guy. And Jacoby Brissett's not his guy. Jacoby Brissett is a backup in in the NFL, and that's where he belongs. And Cam Newton believes he's a starter in this league. He believes he's better than thirty two quarterbacks. We know that because he said it. No, and the Under Armour commercial. And the Under Armour commercial. And he's banking on himself a lot. So that's where that's where it's going to be long. And you're kidding yourself if you don't think Cam if this this the the starting position quarterback position for the Patriots is Cam Newton's job to lose right now. The only scenario where I don't think that happens is what you painted, Bill. They sign Jimmy Garoppolo and they move on from Cam Newton before the season starts. Yeah, that's it. That's it. 
at this present second, like he's obviously going to start. But I mean, again, the, I still think we're we're a week away from free agency or four days away from free agency, I should say, and then the draft coming up. So there's still a lot of wiggle room for Bill to make a move here. I'm not sold on him <laughs> starting. I think. You know what I found, Ray? You know what I found very interesting for old we'll Billy ba- Billy Bad Words down here. Um, <laughs> just inherently kind of a, a negative person. His off season outlook on teams is very positive. Mm-hmm. He's a, he's a very glass half full kind of guy when it comes to the, the Bruins, the Bruins off season prediction. They, you know, pr- they have a good team. They got a chance. They got a chance. They can get there. The now only they one they like did shit. Celtics. Celtics was the only one that he did. It was like Celtics no. only one. Cause he's not a basketball yeah, guy. He doesn't he, care. He, just just he wants them to be out the first round. So he doesn't have to talk about him. It's ever just again. fucking spite <laughs> talking there. I want him to move. Then I never have to talk about fucking Celtics <laughs> basketball again. The, the the Cam Newton, the free agency starting. Just I'm not to, I'm not totally sold. Not to, wait till week one. one. Cam Newton's in the center. Bill, fuck this team. They're dead to me. Go Bucks. Yeah. That'll be that'll be week one in training camp. If he if he Speaking sucks, the, first, if he sucks the first game one, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. Speaking of game, yeah, Billy Sniff snaps. Just pay attention, folks. Couple months, Billy Snips ass will be right as rain. I hate Cam Newton. I fucking hate the side, but I'm just trying to talk myself into it. I know you are. Here's what you don't have to talk yourself into. Brady took another fucking uh, quote unquote pay cut, saved 19 million on the cap, but he didn't take a pay cut. He got 40 million dollars signed to him on a cashier check, just like he has every single time he's taken a quote unquote pay cut for the Patriots and been given. Now, this is not a bashing Brady because he left. I've been saying this for 10 plus years. The idea that Brady takes less is Look, it can't be proven fit, false because you can't see all the numbers behind the scenes, but they give him all his money up front. They give him loads and loads of cash up front. And normally in, in deals like that, you either get cut at the end of that deal and you don't see the back end 10 or 12 million on the salary cap. Brady, Brady was never cut until the last end of this deal. There was never a this was this past year was the only time you had dead money in Brady's deal. So not only did he get all that money up front for saving them salary cap, he also got the back end of the deal money on those deals, which, you know, the 12, $13 million cap hit that everyone was praising him for. You're not taking into consideration the 30 fucking million dollars. You got a duffel bag from Robert Kraft at the beginning of that signing. Yeah. And all they do is stretch it out over the life of the right. contract. So, so what happens now is I think they go what a 5 million or 9 million dead cap next year. And I think it's 14 the year after that. So I mean, he signed till forty-five, but I mean, it's the same thing the Patriots have been doing. They just right, spread but if it he out. plays, it's not dead. Yeah, it's not dead. Yeah, <laughs> it's only dead if he's not on the team. Exactly. Yeah, because so he's like, gonna. What's he's gonna do next year? If he comes back next year, I still want to play. Again. He's gonna do it again, and it's just gonna do it, and it's gonna end up like the Patriots just end up this year where they had thirteen million dollars of dead cap with Brady not on the roster. Right. That's what's gonna happen, and. I'm all power to the Bucks. This is the way Brady's been doing it his whole career, and this is the way keep the band together. You just franchise Chris Godwin. You got to bring back Barrett, Sue. Uh, Which Barrett was already liking everything that once uh, Tom Brady posted yeah. that number it seven might... TB twelve fucking number seven on his. Brady's completely yes. changed the culture. He yeah. walked Shaq, into that Shaq front Barrett's office. Barrett's going and said, there. Yeah. Just there. He Look, here's all how the Sue. Here's wants how the numbers work. Co- Give me my cash. David. They're going to go 19 and 0 next year. They have a very good shot. The only two t- tough teams they play next year is Buffalo, and I. Th- think Kansas City. I don't know if I'm correct on that, but I know Buffalo is definitely at home. Those are the only two. They only have two tough matchups next year. They could go 19 and 0 next there's year. Still, you still, there's still an Arians little thing in there, and it's still Tampa. There's he doesn't coach. On, there's he some doesn't hiccups the along the way. They got the Patriots on the road too. Don't sleep on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there yet. The Cam Newton. Cam Newton got jab all over Tom Brady's ass. Yeah. Okay. No, but they got guys to sign. I mean, Mike Evans looks like he already said after the Super Bowl, like redo my contract. We let's run it back. Fucking uh, Fournette wants to go back. Levante David, who's their best line. Antonio Brown, Antonio Brown. I mean, they could legitimately bring back that whole team and they got hot at the right time. And you saw it. Oh, the 18 Patriots did the same thing. They basically it's hard to were, repeat. Baby. It's hard to repeat. Hardest thing to do in well, sports. The last guy to do it was Tom Brady. So, yep. I don't I, look, I'm not doubting him. You can doubting him. I'm I'm one Cam Newton start in the preseason away from buying a fucking Bucks jersey from Wuhan, dude. Wasn't he? He's oh, I know what? a guy. <laughs> Please contact me. I like Hasn't he been to like the last like five out of six Super Bowls? Like, yeah, think he's about been to that. all the Super Bowls, oh, it's, Bill. It's he's been to insane. all of them. Let's continue the suck train because we went long on that. Uh, the Bruins suck again. This is a uh, Sunday. We're recording this after the Saturday debacle. Uh, is this this team? Well, hold on. Let me paint a couple of scenarios for you. Uh, the schedule has been rough. They got mm-hmm. fucked because of COVID. They, they played basically two weeks on the road. 
Um, and then, you know, and it's back to back. This is just the way it's going to be. This is, this is how the schedule is set up. Uh, you're playing, you know, the, the way that you're playing in division. So you're playing all these teams. We knew that that was going to be tough playing teams back to back and two out of three nights and so on and so forth. However, the bigger issue here is the top line of the Bruins, which is excellent, which is still the top line in hockey. Can't carry you every single night, especially when Bergeron's 35, 36, Marshawn's 31, 32. They can't, ca- no line in hockey can carry you every single night. And in the in the back end of this team just does not have enough top Allen top end talent to compete on those days that that the top line is is not clicking. And I just I just wonder if that's just what this team is. Not the two two, but I thought that's kind of what this team is. But is it more the schedule or is it more the team at this point? Well, I mean, and they also have injuries that they're dealing with. But that fucking effort on Saturday was putrid. Putrid. You call that effort? <laughs> yeah, right. Good point. Like, Jesus Christ. You want to talk about a, you know, we've thrown the, the, the schedule loss cliche out there. You know, you look at that, but dude, none of them wanted to be there. And I think I texted you guys this earlier. Every time you see some guys late scratch, late lineup additions, you know, late lineup changes right before game time, this team comes flat out on their face. I, I feel like it's every game. You saw Jake DeBrus get scratched. You know, and you've seen a couple other guys line up changes right before these games. And these guys just they just can't answer the bell when it comes like that. I just feel like adversity. They just can't do it. I mean, I, I don't think it's a coaching thing. I think, you know, Bruce Cassidy is one of the best coaches in hockey. You're seeing it out of the top line, but none of these guys are producing. I don't know if maybe if it, I, I, I don't know. I don't have an explanation. You're you're thin on D. You're really banged up right now. You saw a little bit of Jake DeBrus come back after his benching. He came back pissed off. You saw him score a goal right away, and now he's out with COVID. So I, I just – I don't know. You played a lot of hockey in the last year and a half going back to the Stanley Cup game seven. That was that, – that, you know, th- those playoffs were a grind. You, you only gotta, had four months off in between, though. But that was my next point. You did get a you did get a good break. I mean, you are an old team. You are playing a lot of back to backs. You are playing, you know, fifty six games in one hundred four days or one hundred twelve days or whatever, something crazy like that. So it's basically, I mean, it's a stretch when your top two, your top starters are uh, Bergeron, who's turning thirty six, Rask, who's thirty five, Krejci, who's thirty three, thirty four, and Marshawn. I mean, th- this is catching up. You're seeing injuries take a toll. Call, uh, Kevin Miller's out with a knee injury. Not De- DeBrusque. You have Jeremy Lozano. Carlo, the- Carlo's Car- not Carlo, coming back. Carlo's not coming back. You had Z- Zach Sanishin come up, play one fucking game, who actually looked pretty goddamn good, and now he's out. So it's like they've been hit with the injury bug. Did you say Marshan was hurt? Did you send a text the other day that Marshan? He played yesterday. He played. If, 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 if you want to call, if you want to call, hurt. played. Yeah, he's I mean hurt. they're they're banged up, and again, it's a lot of hockey. It's a lot. And now that all those COVID games are coming up to play, the Pittsburgh game they're playing back to back tonight and tomorrow because tonight is Monday. Tomorrow's Tuesday. They're playing back to back games. Uh, the twentieth and fifteenth, I believe, they have a little short break because of the. Or I mean, the twentieth to the twenty something or other twenty fifth. There's like an all star break or whatever it is. I don't know what it is, but they have like a five days off. So, yeah. Here's I mean, what I'll say. You... Here's what I'll say about it. I think that you're right, Bill. I think that um, I think the schedule is catching up to them combined with the injuries. Uh, but I don't think that they can skate uh, on those excuses. Look, you know, in, in a in a full regular season, you're going to have lulls, and this might be one of them for the Bruins. And they are good enough to good enough to be pulling off, you know, put, getting one scraping by and stealing points when they probably should just be losing games. Obviously, the game against the Rangers is, is not one of those scenarios. But you know, then Islanders game, they probably you know, they probably don't belong in that game and they scrape by and get a point. And a lot of games, Rich, honestly, and I don't mean to cut The whole off, beginning but... of the season w- was like that. If we were, if you remember, yep. we talked about it and said, this is not sustainable and it's not, but, uh, but my point is all of that being true. I still don't think it, um, it, it should stop the Bruins from making a move, whether you don't think that you have the talent to, to compete and that's why you're losing or whether you just think it's the schedule, regardless, a move, a move for this team, is going to add a spark and a change of pace and, and, some, and something different to get these guys' heads back on straight. And that's what's going to take to get through this type of um, season and this type of schedule. And, you know, we'll, we're going to talk more about this on Tuesday. We're gonna, what the fuck is wrong with the Bruins, I think, is what we labeled it. Um, so, you know, we don't have to go too far into detail, but I think that's where they're at. And I think a move is necessary because of all, because of D, all, thing, all of the above. Yeah, I mean, and you got to think it, with the condensed schedule, it's top four. You're at that fourth seed. You're basically two 
<laughs> excuse me, two get two points above Philadelphia, same game. So I mean, you're you're fighting now. The good thing about hockey is, just get healthy right now. You can make add add guys. You still have a very very talented team. Seeding in the NHL doesn't matter. Yeah. It does not matter once Never whatsoever. Has. You you've seen eight seeds beat number one seeds off. A, a, and I'm not sport or the eight seed coming off. Yeah, so many times the, the number one seed. Quack. Quack. Ooh, I Quack. did just watch the Mighty Ducks this morning. Which one? Original? Yes. What's your favorite Mighty Ducks? Quick, go. D2. Yep. Hmm. Always. Always. No, it's D1. This, this has, is a uh... distraction. <laughs> this is a distraction and a fire in a barrel. Gordon Bombay is, <laughs> Gordon Bombay is a drunk. Don't forget that. And I, oh, can I ask, he can I ask you a question? Charlie's mom like a bag of, like a bag of yeah, potatoes. Yeah, then he went with the Iceland chick. For the Iceland chick. No, the Iceland chick, yes, but then he went with the uh, teacher. Yeah. Have you seen the new preview? How does he go from like, uh, like if you go uh, to Simple Mind Sports, if you go to SimpleMindSports.com, you can read a great blog by Rich McPhee. He, he it's has ridiculous. That. Like, let it, me sum it up for you, Ray. Fuck the new Mighty Ducks. It makes no sense. How does he not play hockey since he's in Pee Wee hockey? Then coaches Team USA to the gold, and all of a sudden now he's a professional hockey player. And now in the new one, he's a fucking a skate sharpener. Guy was a lawyer. It he's makes Hans. no sense. He's it Hans. makes no fucking sense. He's, he's Hans, dude. He took Hans' job. Holic. So <laughs> are we, and to... we fucking manage. <laughs> We're functioning We're alcoholics. Functioning alcoholics. <laughs> Uh, speaking of alcoholics, Kyrie should be one. He'd probably be more probably fun. Probably is red wine. Him and LeBron. Oh. <laughs> either either way, he fucked. He's he's good at basketball. He's better than than the Celtics. He drops forty on their nuts on uh, uh over the weekend. Jalen Brown looked gassed. Maybe that had to do with the twenty five plus minutes, or whatever he played at the All Star game. Uh, they had no Kevin Garnett. Harden looked like shit. He looked like he had spent Durant. a lot of nights. In- yeah, Kevin Sorry. Garnett hasn't played in a few years. <laughs> he Kevin retired Durant. a couple of years ago. Uh, he has a book out. I don't know if you read it. Oh, he has a great chapter. Chapter one. Uh, Beep. <laughs> James Harden looked like he had a couple nights in Atlanta after the uh, after the Super Bowl getting those chicken wings. Uh, and the return of Marcus Smart, apparently. Uh, Wick, I know you're listening. That We're didn't not help. undefeated. We're not that undefeated. didn't help. Nope. 0 for 1 on that one. Um, I'll chalk it up. Look, the Nets are better than you. Nets are better than the Celtics. Kyrie had something to prove. When Kyrie has something to prove, he's one of the best basketball players on the planet, it, regardless of how insufferably douchey he is off the court. And, you know, we can get into the comments off the court. We're running late on time. But, uh, you know, basically just f- a fuck you to the media. You're dabbing up your Celtics teammates. Oh, yeah, pretty crazy, huh? Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah, considering Talk you all basically... that shit about me. Yeah. <laughs> you were a complete so asshole, that guy. He was a complete asshole. To everybody in the Celtics organization, in the in well, maybe not his teammates, but reportedly yes, his teammates, especially the media. Fuck Thanksgiving. Fuck you guys for for he got fuck mad him. at them for asking about the Kevin Durant in the hallway, uh, the two max contracts. He called uh, this media the being people liars. Guess what? They were right. He you know he said I'll be coming back to Boston if you sign me. Do we have to go over everything that Kyrie Irving did to prove that how insufferably douchey he was his last year in Boston? And now and now after this game he comes out and says, "Oh yeah, pretty crazy. I'm not an asshole." Basically, fuck you, Kyrie Irving. Fuck Kyrie Irving to the fucking moon. Oh, can ugh. I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Hypothetically speaking, yeah. He, with all his millions of dollars, he starts like a media company and decides he wants to buy us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are we changing our tune on Kyrie Irving? Yeah, absolutely. Of I'll yeah. Buy it. Well, yeah. All right, all right. Snip, snap. Got yeah, it. Got no, it. Snip, snap. I will buy. I'll suck out. my dick between my legs and fucking walk down the aisle and sign that contract. Hey, simple minds. I'm Kyrie Irving. I want to buy you. Oh, we I love will, you. Ooh, I will buy worthy. Wuhan out of Kyrie Irving jerseys if that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> but until then, fuck that clown. Uh, last thing on the Celtics, obviously the trade deadline is coming up very, very close. The Celtics have to make a move. They can't punt in the season. We saw Joel Embiid go down. It was potentially an ACL looked real bad. It's not as bad two to three weeks, but the bigger point here is anything can happen. I've said this a thousand times. I've made this example a thousand times. When I moved down to the DC area was the year uh, Strasburg was drafted. Not two or three years after that, the Nats made the playoffs. Strasburg got hurt. He could have pitched. They sat him out. No, they shut him down. And they, it was on an innings limit. Well, that's what I just said. Yeah. Um, said they, went on, 
Just say Bill is right. They could have been favored to win the World Series. They had a great team that year. They went on to be some of the biggest choke artists in the playoffs for the following six years. That's why they made our loser city list. That's why Ray has to root for them. And it's all because, in my opinion, they sat Strasburg down because they thought that they had championships lined up for years behind it. And that's not how it works in sports, you douchebags. That's not how it works. You go for it every single year if you have a chance. You have two all stars in their mid to early early twenties. You are the, you are a top four team in this in the East just with those guys in Kemba. Go fucking make a move, Danny. If Harrison Barnes is traded to another team, it's a complete failure. I'm on the fire, Danny trade bill. I'm with you. They have to do something. Fuck this bench and these rookies. Go do it now. I disagree because this team is not going to win in the next three years because they are budding superstars and they won't be uh, superstars for, till three years from now because they don't have it. They can't coexist with each other. They can't. Even if you bring Harrison Barnes over here, you're still going to get eliminated second round Eastern Conference Finals. This team will not win a championship for three to four years because these guys have to grow up and they're not going to grow up for another three to four years. I'm glad that you're a Washington fan because that's exactly the that's exactly the mentality I just described that 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 hurt the nationals and cost them a chance at, at a world series for going on. I mean, it was close to six or seven seasons. Even you have a chance. Signed, You're, uh, you can Scherzer. be a top three team. You can be a top three team in the East right now. And, and if that's the case, anything can happen. The fucking Raptors signed Kawhi Leonard one year and he won a championship because Miami all, of the, went all to of the Warriors NBA finals last year, <laughs> the Warriors that. got hurt. The Swept. heat went to the finals last year. Anything can happen. You have three all-stars on your team. That's better than most teams in the NBA. It doesn't matter if you think they're ready or not. Anything can happen. You can't punt on seasons just because you think it takes them three to four years to grow up. Next season, Jason Tatum might say, I want to get the fuck out of here because you didn't do anything at the trade deadline. You're also dealing with that. You're dealing with an era of players that make decisions for the teams. You have to fucking do something. Oh, I, I totally agree, but I don't think Danny's going to do anything. And I think you're going to be on the fire Danny train after this season. Well, I might be. Um, right, that black shirt you're wearing look, makes you look like a black jelly bean. <laughs> I bet you I taste better than a black jelly bean, though. I didn't know. I you, black uh, we'll ask Kelly. I bet she'll say otherwise. <laughs> ask she your forgets. mother. Ask your mother, Bill. <laughs> Bill, I didn't know Jack Bill j- j- jelly beans had tits. When did that happen? <laughs> Sorry, I was sweating. When on they the made home. Mr. Potato Head a girl. <laughs> it's 40 degrees and it's a snow squall up here, and I was driving with the window down because I was so hot. Uh, that a baby. Uh, that you know those uh, Imperial Stelts. They don't do it to you. Uh, Bill, this one's for you. Marvelous Marvin uh, Hagler died. Look, yeah. I'm not the biggest boxing guy. I followed it a little bit. I assume since you know he was popular in your uh, you know prime and uh, growing up in the teenage 80s years. There. Teenage, teenage years. years, the pride of Brockton. You might have something yeah. to say, and you're a boxing fighting guy, so floor is yours if you have. Yeah, any. him and uh, Hearns was probably one of the best fights you ever watched. Go watch the first round in that, where they literally came out of the t- drop of the bell and literally beat the shit out of each other. That set the tone for a nice twelve round fight. I mean, one of the best fighters of all time used to be the uh, the champion. It's shit, it's a fucking. Um, Does he have the most uh, hometown boy? Most uh, title fights in middleweight history or something like that, 12 in a row or something like that. It's up there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he fought. Died I mean, in New Hampshire cool. too. I didn't know he lived in New Hampshire. Yeah. He, he got, he got the boxer CTE injuries. I mean, yeah, he, he was only he 66, got, 66. Yeah. I mean, you got the our, hurricane, Peter McNeely, our boy McNeely is going to, he'll be lucky to make 66. Don't Should we go to that? I mean, he's one of the best fighters of all time. I mean, dude, I tell you, if you have a chance, Peter McNeely, go, go on YouTube and look at the Hearns. Um, yeah. I was watching fight. it today. Yeah. They showed it on sports center today. Dude, it's disgusting. Yeah. Disgusting. It's a shame. Um, all right. Well, rest in peace to uh to the hometown boy prior to Brockton there. Um, this has been the Simple Mind Sports Show Monday headlines, March 15th. Uh fuck daylight savings. Mm-hmm. And Ray, welcome back. I think like the the flush just has gone out of your face. I th- but all right, we're back on Is the Is that train. the triple? Okay. Straight tripping. Straight tripping. All right, did we'll you see. Bu- did you buy a fucking another Zoom session? We'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. He did, Bye-bye. you son of a bitch. I bought it when we were interviewing Mike. The, yeah, but uh, I, I, I thought you were gonna bitch to them and say, "Hey, yeah, you, you still get it for a, you still get it." I for haven't. A month. Yeah, that's still there. It was this one was only fifteen bucks. I, I, I oh, I didn't oh. have to do the hundred and fifty. I don't know why we had to do that one before. Um. Anyway, Ray. God damn it. Uh. Welcome to a quick edition of Oh, Dark Thirty. The Simple Mind Sports Show, baseball show. I missed that on the email. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. 
Sweet tripping. Sweet tripping. Uh, oh, Dark 30 is actually brought to you by Pipe Dreams Brewing, <laughs> in which Ray is. <laughs> there you go. Oh, Sweet tripping. Hey, does he even go to make the interview? I'm going to ask all your Shoot. questions. Yeah, because you didn't write any, you douchebag. I just it's looked at the on. things. You don't even have a question on there. You're just going to sit there and look like an idiot. Not it's been a one. long weekend. It's been a long weekend. Leave me alone. Hey, Jake Groom hit 96 97, one scoreless inning in his debut. Oh, Good. fuck. Call up the duck boats, boys and girls. We're going We're going to go to the World Series. Ray, I don't know if you've noticed, but we are showing positivity in the offseason for our I Boston did. sports. We're I showing did. positivity in the offseason for the Boston sports so we can put on our Snip Snap t-shirts once the season starts and they start out 0-13. Okay? This is Positivity Town in O-Dark 30. Jay Groom has, that, been, baby. has been back. He's had a, a setback in his pitching career due to injuries, and I think he had some drug problems. And now he's at a 96-97, a scoreless inning first. You know, I think it's his second time pitching in the against big leaguers. Hey, looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Tanner Hoak could be a fucking stud. Could be yeah. absolutely lights out. And he might not even start this season on, on the staff. Which is a shame. It's a shame because, Nick, I, I mean – it's a shame because Nick Pavetta is playing – is pitching just as good. You know, Nick Pavetta's look good, and he's out of options. So, I mean, unless you're going to that six-man rotation, you know, Hawk, Jay Groom, those guys are going to, you know, the minors. But it's good. I mean, it's kind of building on momentum for Groom from last year. You saw him down in uh, Worcester, Pawtucket, wherever they were last year at the – alternative site you know and he was pitching against the triple a guys he was looking good you need him i mean he's a first round pick you know coming out he was 18 coming out of call uh high school uh fuck he had a, i think he had a lat injury and then he had um tommy john so i mean you want this guy to hit you can't keep missing on first round draft picks especially pitchers you look at you took trey bell or trey ball i trey believe ball. At, no, at number seven which completely and utterly flamed out you took him i believe he went 14th or somewhere in the teens i, I forget the exact Jake room yeah, somewhere 12th. in 12th. Yeah, somewhere right around there. So, I mean, you need – your top half of that first round, and you need this guy to hit. And to see him get back to where he was in high school, I mean, he was in the mid to upper 90s in high school. You know, he also he, has that big Barry Zito curveball. That, that which is him. disgusting, yeah. which is – you saw why he was drafted the first round out of high school. So, I mean, he did have character concerns coming out. That was why he kind of slipped to 12th. But, I mean, the talent's there, and, and hopefully this is the year. I mean, he's – Coming out of high school, he was top three of the rotation. Yeah, I, I just look at it, and again, this I'm, uh, I know we're joking about the positivity, but you know, from a Red Sox standpoint, and we've talked about this, it's hard to get behind the Red Sox, number one, because the fucking game blows. And I don't know if I sent you guys that article. Uh, I read it yesterday about uh, Rob Manfred and, you know, basically being a pussy about making decisions and changing the game and not doing it because of the pushback of the MOBPA. But furthermore, from a Red Sox standpoint, I, I haven't been able to attach myself to this team because they've been so up and down, not building towards anything. Just, it seems like a night and day organization. So, you know, I've been saying this, the, the whole hot stove, cold stove with Heim Bloom going out there and making moves that seem like minor moves and, and guys we've never heard of. I was at least for it because it seems like he's building towards something, whether it works or not. I don't know, but right now it looks like you got a little core of young pitching, which is what you need to be successful in major league baseball in Nick Pavetta, Jay groom, Tanner Hawk, even the Seabold killed has looked okay. You got Brian Uh, Mata. I think Brian Mata is uh, technically might be your number one prospect. Yeah, he is pitching prospect. Um, So shit, that's four or five guys that if two of them hit, you're in real good position, especially if sale comes back. Okay. Eduardo Rodriguez can get back to form and be your number three guy or number two guy. Now you're look. now you're looking like a real baseball club and we can talk about uh, being good because your, well, especially lineup's still gonna, your lineup's still going to smash, especially long-term. If you think about cost control players, you know, the Red Sox have been, they've spent to the, to the luxury tax, but you've seen it the last couple of years, they're trying to get back under it. So they have no problems spending up there it just gives you more flexibility with the roster if you can get a couple of these guys hitting when if you've got five six seven hundred thousand dollar two three starters on your team i mean just think of jake room hits and and say he comes up and tail end of this year and then you get him for next year so i mean you're, you're thinking these guys hawk erod jake room brian mata these are the guys you want to see next year the year after i mean these are the guys you're going to build around chris chris sale i get it, he signed a five-year deal but you're not going to see the real chris sale again until next year the minimum right. Oh yeah, you know be I mean? so that's, that's yeah. year three into his deal, which is so, fine. I mean, but if you can be a, uh, if you can be a club that is 
in September fighting maybe for a playoff spot. That's interesting to me. And yeah, then, know, and then knowing it. you have a core of young guys, especially in, in you know, pitching, uh, then that that's what I want to see. That's honestly what I want to see this year in Heim Bloom's basically first year. I don't count COVID, the COVID year as, as a year in baseball. So, no. uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm positive on that. Last note I had, I read something. I forget. Sorry, I didn't send it to you. Hunter Red, they're talking about Hunter Renfro in center field. When they say Hunter Renfro, it, it seemed like he was just another fucking guy that hit home runs. But they're talking about him as a uh, as an actual big league center fielder and putting Verdugo over and right. Ray, I see you shaking your head. Basically, this whole segment. So why don't you share your negative thoughts? This team's gonna suck. They're gonna be fighting for the Orioles <laughs> for fucking last place. This team's gonna suck. We're gonna go to opening day. They're gonna go fucking go. <laughs> Like five and twenty, and you guys are gonna be like, "Oh my god, <laughs> Jesus Christ! All these young guys suck. This fucking farm team sucks. They couldn't develop anyone. Everyone sucks on this team. We get to trade everyone. Why we let Mookie Betts go? JD fucking Martinez can't hit the ball. I guess it wasn't a COVID year. He sucks. Everyone's gonna suck. The fucking black cloud over New England's already here. With the Patriots are gonna suck. The Red Sox are gonna suck. The Celtics can't win shit. The Bruins are old and fucking tired, and they're all young guys. So fucking. T- it's fucking over. It's over in New England. Straight tripping. This oh, has been the Civil Mind Sports Show. Oh, Dark 30 baseball show. Uh, all right. We'll see you on Tuesday. We'll, we'll be talking about the Bruins who suck. See you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. But hold on real quick, Cordero, I mean, fr- once Frenchie comes back, you'll probably see him in center. But the only reason is because he's not going to start the season healthy. So you gotta, you don't have much of an option. You're either going to play Renfro in <clears throat> center or right field. Him and Verdugo are going to flip back and forth. But I think it's because Cordero's not healthy. Hey, why not? Why not? Why not, Bill? You're fucking <gasps> Bill! We went all, we went 45 minutes. Come on. Oh, Drew Brees announced his retirement today. Happy set, happy trails, Drew Brees. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the New England Patriots realm of uh, shitbags. Hey, did Hill. Drew Brees? Did Drew Brees just retire? That's yep. what I just said.